Hello there, I'm Vicki Parfano from Aussie Stampers. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you something I put up on Instagram and that is getting a lot of interest and that is this butterfly that I've stamped and colored in inks and I've actually painted the inks onto this piece. So you can see the three colors I've used here. I'm going to make another card, this time showing you a different effect with a different style of background using exactly the same stamp exactly the same three colors and you'll see how different this one looks. So I'm stamping it in Versamark ink and embossing it with some black embossing powder. Now I'm going to heat set that but before I do I'm going to make sure that it's fully covered and often with watercolor paper like this you have to give it a couple of coats. I also have a stamping mat underneath this which helps the image to get a much better impression. And I have a Copic multi-liner to fill in any of the spots that didn't quite stamp. Because it's watercolor paper, it's not going to give you that super fine stamped image that regular paper will, but I kind of like that effect anyway. So I'm bringing in a brush to dust off all the excess bits before I start bringing in my embossing um, gun, my heat gun, excuse me, my heat gun. So when you're doing this, You'll notice that once it starts to heat up, it will emboss fairly fast. You'll go from a very powdery look to that lovely shiny glossy look pretty quickly. Now I'm going to stamp a sentiment on the card. And I love this script. It's beautiful modern calligraphy. So I just had to put this sentiment on the outside of the card. And again, same process. I'm going to use a stamping mat underneath. And I'm going to press it down and hold it a bit longer than I normally would, giving a bit of a good press, more than I normally would, just because it is that rough watercolour paper. So same process, put a sheet of paper underneath to protect, bring in your black embossing powder and you're good to go. So I love painting with watercolour inks. And if you haven't tried using these inks just as they are, undiluted, you can do the same system that I'm using here, which is just to get a small palette and put a couple of drops of ink into the palette. And that becomes what you're painting with. And the thing I love about watercolor inks is they're really vibrant. They're not uh, as opaque as regular watercolor paints would be. They are really intense and beautiful colours, really, really bright. And as you know, if you've been following me, I love bright colours. Bright colours really make me happy. So I'm going to emboss this and heat set it. And I'm going to do a different sort of background. You'll see in the butterfly that I have already created there, it has a very loose wash in the background. I've only used the same three colours, so I've created that orange by combining the yellow and the red. And I really like the fact that it has a kind of a halo effect around it, and it's kind of messy background. Then I very carefully painted in each of the segments with a fine sable brush. And I really found that a very therapeutic, soothing exercise. I took my time with it to make it nice and clean edged and I love how it turned out. So now you can see I'm bringing in some hot pink washi tape. Washi tape is great for this and I'm just taping this directly to my work surface. I have a really sturdy work surface that I can wash down and clean so I'm happy to affix this to the work, work surface, it's fine. And I am going to create a border around the outside. Now I have a filbert brush which is a rounded brush which I love for using for watercolor washes. And I'm going to wash the outside first and leave the butterfly body without any water on it at all to begin with because I want a slightly different effect on the body to the background. So what I'm doing is I'm watering down the background without getting it really wet. I'm just putting a nice light sheen of water and then putting a second or third coat across that and leaving the body of the butterfly clear because I want a slight distinction between the butterfly and the background so it looks as though the background is sitting forward. 
And the Filbert brush is one of my favourites for watercolour. It seems to be really easy to control for these large washes. Now I'm bringing in the first colour and I'm going to start with yellow because it's the palest colour. And I'm going to bring in a different combination of the way I use the colours. So in the first piece, I use the red and yellow together. This piece, I'm going to put the red and yellow separate. So I'm putting, well, it's actually a melon mambo colour, which is a pink. I'm putting this at the top and washing it across the butterfly. And you can see as I get to the body of the butterfly, it comes out quite a bit darker, which was my intention because I want that to sit forward. Now clean off your brush with plenty of water be between... Um, swipes and then coming in with that green I'm going to place that in the middle so you'll see that the yellow and the red are not touching the green is touching the red and the green is touching the yellow so there's not going to be any orange in this piece even though I'm using the same three colors and where the red and green are touching I'm going to get a very soft mauve and where the green and yellow are touching I'm going to get a slightly lime colored yellow and I'm just putting a tissue on the top. You can see there's not a whole lot of water there, but I'll do this because I want to make sure there's no water pooled around that washi tape. You can see I'm even dabbing it down and making sure the washi tape is fairly dry. And at this point, you can bring in your heat tool on low setting. You'd only use a low setting on this because remember it's already been heat set, the embossing. So it's just the low setting so that it can dry the paper. Now when you're peeling off the washi, there is a technique to this. What I'm doing is I'm holding that tape as close to the work surface as possible. You can see here again, coming up the side, if I was to stop here and pull it upright like that, I would tear the paper. So you're keeping it as close to the work surface as you can and work slowly. And what this does, it creates a really pretty border around the outside. Now the edging isn't going to be perfect because this is a very rough watercolour paper. If you had smooth watercolour paper and you're using this same effect, you would quite possibly get a very smooth outline on the edges. But I love this effect anyway. I think it just shows the fact that you're working on a toothed paper that has a lot of texture. And I really like how this turned out. Now I'm bringing in that Copic Multiliner, which is a waterproof pen. And I am going to just fill in any little spots that didn't quite stamp initially. And it's only a few little places. I quite liked the effect that the Your Delightful sentiment had with all the little bubbles in the middle of it. But I thought, well, I really do like this style of text. So I'm going to fill in all the spots. But you could have it either way. Now you can see the different technique of doing a very controlled wash and a gradation of color in the second piece that I made compared to a very loose, kind of messy wash in the background of the first. And I like both of them. I think they're both really a different way to approach it. And the butterfly looks really cool with these stripes through it, but it also looks great with all the pieces very carefully painted in ink. Now I'm going to make a card just by folding a half a sheet of A4 card stock in half and giving it a press with the bone folder. And I have some very vanilla card stock that I'm going to use as a layering piece inside of it. And when you're putting these pieces together, I found the layering piece, it's very easy to use just a Tombow multi-adhesive on that because this is two regular pieces of card stock and that will go on very smoothly. But for the front layer, I find if you use this type of glue, it looks really bumpy. Uh, I don't like the effect if you use glue on the outside. So what I'm going to use to adhere the art piece is some double-sided tape. So I'm going to bring that in now and show you how I put the taped pieces on. So I'm going to run the tape, you can see it's quite bumpy there, I'm going to run it beyond the edges of the piece. So you can see they're sticking out at the side and then I'm going to come back and trim them down. And I found that this is the way that really flattens out your paper beautifully. You end up with a lovely flattened piece of art on the front rather than a lumpy bumpy piece. 
So this butterfly stamp is uh, a new stamp. I'm really enjoying playing with this with things like brushes, with the inks, just with my markers, colouring it in. And I love this technique that I've used today as well. And I have used this technique before. You may have seen me use this on a couple of other videos as well. You can see how nice and flat that is. What you can do is turn it over and put a heavy weight on it like a book or something like that and then leave it overnight and then that means that it's really going to be nice and flat when you open it. How's that for a card? I really enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed watching today's program and I'm looking forward to seeing you again next time. Come along and join us in Stampers Art Gallery, which is my private group that I have over on Facebook. There's a competition running every month and the link for that Stampers Art Gallery is below this video. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.